Hi, my name is David. Today we're going to change the sacrificial zincs on your boat engine. Why do you need to do this? Simply because your cooling system, the raw water portion of your cooling system, has various different types of metals in it. And when different metals are submerged in water, a very slight microcurrent of electricity is created and it will over time dissolve or deteriorate the um, what do they call it the less noble of the two metals so by installing a sacrificial zinc in uh, typically they're in your heat exchangers um, so my boat engine at Ford Lehman has one in the for the main cooling system it has another sacrificial zinc in the uh, transmission oil cooler and it has another one in the uh, what's the third one I'm drawing a blank on it anyway it's got three of them and uh, so by installing a sacrificial zinc um, in these heat exchangers the uh, zinc because it's the least noble of the various metals in a boat engine will deteriorate rather than uh, the copper or something else that's in your uh, your cooling system. So periodically you got to change these. Um, I do mine about every three or four months. Uh, it will vary depending upon the water uh, and some other factors in your uh, for your boat. So something you just got to do if you want to protect your engine. It's a simple job. There's it's a low skill job. Nothing fancy about it. So uh, we'll get going here and um, we'll be back in touch here real quickly. Okay, you'll need some supplies uh, depending upon the zincs that you have. My boat has two different size zincs, so um, get a, buy a supply of zincs. Uh, I buy them in bulk to save a few bucks. Um, so this first one is a 3 8 by 2 inch zinc, and the other one that I have is a 5 16 by uh, 3 8 zinc. Again, depending upon your boat engine, these may or may not be the correct size. So get a supply of zincs. Secondly, you'll need some sort of a plug uh, because some of your zincs may be below the water line of your the cooling system in your engine. And you'll need a way to um, keep the water from gushing out. So have some sort of a cork available. This is just a black cork that I rubber cork that I got at the local hardware store and you'll also need um, some Teflon tape to uh, put on the threads of the zinc holder when you reinsert it into the uh, heat exchanger and it's also good to have a uh, multimeter because once you've reinstalled the zinc you need to double check that there's continuity between the zinc and the rest of the engine. And you'll need some wrenches. On my boat, um, I need a 9 16 socket or box end wrench and an 11 16 socket or box end wrench. Additionally, it's a good idea to have some sort of a tray uh, because it's easy to spill some cooling water as you uh, remove these zincs. So you can either put some sort of a tray or pan or something rather underneath uh, the heat exchanger to catch the water that you spill or you can and or you can stuff a big towel underneath it um, I usually use a towel uh, just seems easier so um, once you've got those supplies uh, then we're ready to go to work here okay step one is to close your raw water intake valve um, so that you when you remove these zincs there is a minimal amount if any water pressure um, coming out of the the heat exchanger so on my boat I've got one intake valve with the raw water and then back at the stuffing box I've got a, um, a water um, injection site so I'll, I'll close that valve so close any and all raw water cooling intake valve step one we're gonna start with my um, heat exchanger for my cooling system it's right here, this rather large heat exchanger. It says no step on it. 
and the zinc is right over here and it's clearly labeled zinc so you can't miss it so we're going to remove that and because this is above the, the cooling system water line there's no water gushing out when I remove this so um, you can just remove it and you don't have to panic about water gushing in <laughs> so all you have to do is put a in my case on this zinc an 11 16 socket or box in wrench on it and then simply unscrew it it's very nothing to it so here's the zinc removed and depending upon how long it's been in and other factors it will either be slightly dissolved or or a large amount dissolved so this has been about three or four months and this one isn't too badly dissolved but as long as I'm in here I'll just go ahead and install a new one to remove the old zinc just put your socket or box end on the the zinc holder this brass thing and then uh, take some pliers or vice grips and uh, at the base of the zinc where it's still nice and strong uh, down, 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 down close to where it screws into the plug put your vice grips on there or some pliers and simply unscrew it also take a pocket knife and clean off any um, old Teflon tape or sealant that may be in those threads of that plug this is what the zinc holder or plug looks like once the zinc is removed uh, the zinc obviously is threaded and screws into the inside of it and then this is what screws into the heat exchanger so clean those threads off you don't want a build up of sealant or Teflon tape and then screw in the new zinc you don't have to get it super tight just get it in firmly okay we've installed the new zinc into the zinc holder and of course you do not put Teflon tape on the threads of the zinc itself you only put Teflon tape and just one wrap on these threads um, one other point I've noticed that more and more marine channelries are selling this entire unit the zinc and the plug holder rather than selling you the individual zincs which and then you can reuse the plug of course that's a ripoff um, don't fall for it just buy a good supply of the zincs and then of course reuse this brass holder and then lastly put uh, one or at the very most two wraps of Teflon tape on those threads and then uh, you simply screw it back into the heat exchanger and uh, then we'll check for continuity so back in a minute okay we've now screwed in the zinc and I'm now going to take my multimeter and put it on the continuity setting and I'm going to put one probe on the zinc holder and then the other probe on another any other portion of the engine and what you want to do is make sure that there's continuity because the zincs won't do their job if there isn't continuity between the zinc holder and the body of the heat exchanger so you're simply making sure that that Teflon tape that's why you don't put too much of the Teflon tape on you just put a little bit on just one wrap at the most two and that way when you tighten it um, you get a metal to metal contact eventually so don't over tighten this just get it good and firm all you need to do is make sure that that uh, it's tight enough that it doesn't that it doesn't leak Okay, now we're going to move on to the other two zincs in my boat. They're underneath the uh, engine internal water line, so we've got to uh, have our plug handy so that when we remove them, uh, we can quickly plug that hole to stop the water from gushing out. Okay, in my boat, my transmission oil cooler is located right beneath the main cooling system heat exchanger. So it's that... Uh, right down there that I'm touching with my toe and the zinc is over there um, pretty much out of view you can make it out there at that far end on the left hand side so we're gonna shove some rags underneath that and have our black rubber plug handy and we're gonna remove that zinc and then quickly shove the rubber plug in there okay I've removed that um, Transmission cooler zinc and shove the black rubber 
plug in. So now we're going to uh, do just like we did on the other zinc. Remove the old zinc, clean the threads, give it a, one or two wraps of Teflon tape, and then reinstall it. And same thing, check for continuity. Okay, my engine oil cooler is on the starboard side of my engine. This is it right here. You can see the, um, the uh, zinc plug, the brass piece there. So I've shoved some rags underneath there, or a big towel actually. And we're just going to take, uh, in my case, the 916 socket again, or box and wrench. Remove it. Install the new zinc. Of course, when you remove it, you got to have your, your rubber plug handy, because water will come gushing out. And uh, remove the old zinc. Once you have it out, install the new one. Remove the old Teflon tape. Put one wrap of Teflon tape on there, and then reinstall it. Um, the uh, my last zinc that I just replaced a few minutes ago, I had trouble getting continuities, and I'd put a little more Teflon tape on it. I'd put a little bit more than one wrap, and I think that's why it had trouble making contact. But when I tightened it a little bit further, uh, I then had continuity. So again, just put one one wrap of Teflon tape on there. Okay, you've completed it. It's not that difficult. Uh, if it was a little bit tricky at all for you the first time around, it'll be a lot easier the second time around. Just do it every three or four months, depending upon your particular conditions. And that's it. It uh, will safe keep your engine. One of the many small things you can do to keep your engine running well. So good luck and happy boating.